recap show like it normally is tonight no 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 tonight is a preview show tonight is a preview show for next week because thank you all for who are already here we're gonna go ahead and do this now and i'm sure we'll do it again later on next week cody rhodes is making a major announcement and his first time ever in nxt ironically the place that his dad helped build Asuka, who could potentially be the women's universe, the women's champion coming into the show next week, depending on how fast lane goes over this weekend, is taking on Roxanne Perez, apparently at the behest of Kiana James, <laughs> somehow, because reasons. Oh, the breakout tournament continues again next week. That's fine. I mean, honestly. NXT cares about as much as that breakout tournament next week as I do right now. They're like, oh, AEW is coming here next week? Oh, well, we should put some stuff on. And by the way, the main event of next week's episode, because I guarantee you it's the main event. If it's not the main event, I guarantee you it opens the show. It's one or the other. It is Carmelo mm -hmm. Hayes with John Cena versus Braun Breaker. No, that's not a created graphic that I've made with Paul Heyman in his corner. Holy Christ, what the hell? Astrid, thoughts? They said, TK, hold my beer. I got more for you. <laughs> it was like, I forgot this, the uh, Dynamo was going against NXT next week, and then first I hear Carmelo say Cena, and I'm like, that's cool. I was like, you know, both from Massachusetts, I get it. And then I hear Asuka as well. I was like, okay, I hear you. And then Haven on top of it. And then Cody and I was like, wait, wait, wait. I forgot what's happening next week. It's the one, it's the Tuesday Night Wars next week. <laughs> yeah, NXT, so. NXT remembered the assignment. Let, let's be honest here. <laughs> they knew what the assignment was. And the assignment is make sure we have a kick ass show next week. Yeah. HBK said, not on my watch, CK. Not on my watch. <laughs> We've got some friends in the chat. Sean Cena jumping in and saying hello. Our good friend Carl Carafel from Turnbuckle Studios, which if you haven't, go ahead and check out the Turnbuckle Studios. Earlier today, they did Turnbuckle Talk with Carl and Chris and maybe OMD, depending on which week it is. As OMB is a sometimes guest, and I didn't see today's episode just yet. But after us, go check them out. And of course, our video bro, Bobby Munson. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Oh, holy hell, did NXT want to... <laughs> Man, they just wanted to go all out this week. Well, no, they didn't want to go all out this week. They went on to go all out next week. Dang, that's how I like to think about. We do have a... Get the tables. Thank you for joining us. We greatly appreciate you coming around. Yes, Sean is not messing around next week. When he knows he's got dynamite and he's got um, 
NXT head to head. He's like, well, let's just see what happens if we bring real star power down. And it's not that NXT out. doesn't have star power, but this is a different level of star yeah. power. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this week's NXT and No Mercy as well. Um, Sean Cena brings it up, so we'll go ahead and address this first, and then we'll go ahead and get into the show proper. He says, it was brought to my attention that Roxanne got booed during a promo. I didn't hear any. Oh, I did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, did she get booed. That crowd did not want her out there during that segment for some reason. <laughs> Which is Why? funny, because that crowd normally really likes her. Yeah. I, I, I have no explanation. I don't know what happened there. Because <laughs> I, I kept thinking about, like, why do they boo her? Because if it's the reason of, like, oh, Indy lot, never lost the title, well, Roxanne didn't either. She has the same claim that Indy has. So I was like, the only reason I will think about is that Roxanne came in NXT and she was doing everything. Like she did everything mm-hmm. during that whole year, whole like if you call it rookie year in NXT. So, like probably thinking like, oh, she shouldn't be here because it should be somebody else's opportunity and time to have that shine. That's the only reason I can think of. But I was like, why would you boo her? She has the same right as Indy to be there right now, so it didn't make sense to me. But that's the only reason I can think about. I mean, technically, she's lost matches for the championship since she lost mm-hmm. the title. Yeah. Whereas Indy Hartwell's not had any because she mm-hmm. literally, as she said, went directly to the main mm-hmm. roster after having been given the champion, uh, after being winning the championship again, and then getting drafted. Mm-hmm. I mean, just a whole. I still can't get over all the announcements. <laughs> We get an NXT No No Mercy recap to start the show. And then we get one of two incredibly long promos that took forever Mm -hmm. to finish. And and this is coming from a guy who obviously doesn't like half the people in one and loves the people in the other and thought both of them were one too long and Mm -hmm. two way too wordy. Go ahead and talk to me, though, what you thought about the Becky Lynch and Friends promo. (laughs) Friends. (laughs) Uh, No, what I liked about this promo more than anything is that it shows that so many people could go and say, look, I want to go against you, Becky. And they have so many reasons to do so as well. I think imagine just the only three of them came out, but there's so many other women that would have come out in this position and said, I want an opportunity. And you know how many other women would have lined up in there as well? right after them i think that like that would have been an incredible visual if it did happen for example but i did like having the three girls that came in indy had already told becky on during raw that she was coming out whenever becky was having her promo to kick off the show tonight so we already knew that indy was going to be one of those people coming out and like i said a few minutes ago you know she has one of those she had the claim of like she never lost the title which is understandable and then she went to the main roster she never got that rematch nothing like that and then uh lyra is just like you and your NXT debut inspired me to be here. I was like, I love Becky, but I don't think her debut really inspired anybody to really do anything because it definitely did not inspire me when I saw it. I just went, How long is she gonna last? Because <laughs> I didn't think anything was gonna happen with her dance moves and everything, or like a dance moves. I don't know what to call them, but yeah, you know, you know what I mean. So, well, you're muted. <laughs> the Celtic sensation that was Becky Lynch. In yeah. her green attire, with her Irish Celtic dancing. And the music. And the music. I remember oh, everything. Oh, God, the music. <laughs> yeah. So thinking of that, and then uh, that, and then Lara being like, you're the one inspired me. So I like having this part of like, we have this moment of Becky Lynch coming in here and saying, look, I want to take anybody that wants to come out here. And having not one, not two, but three people come out here and say, look, hey, I want to face you. So I definitely like that that start of it as well. Like having the girls each one stay their case, and Becky being Becky is like, I'm not gonna pick anybody. I'm just gonna have all three of you wrestle because I want to watch you guys wrestle. And then whoever wins, it goes against me at you know at Halloween Havoc, which is night one because it's a two week event at this point for this month. Um, but yeah, it's like I I like how we have the connection with Lyra as well. Lyra saying it's like, hey, you debuted in june 2014 and then that inspired me to start training she talks about that and i like having that connection between them and it gives us more insight into lyra's character because we don't know much about her except from the, being the 
bird lady as Ed calls her. But um, I love it, especially with like that part of Indy going as well. Hey, if you know Becky can do Mondays and Tuesdays, so can I. <laughs> and I'm like, you got you got it, Indy. I love the love for Indy that during this promo as well. But like Sean Cena saying, they definitely did boo Roxanne. Don't know why that happened, but it definitely just it shocked me to say the least. Um, but yeah, I love everybody coming in here, giving a little bit of their story here as well. And just Becky going, we're going to do a three-way and the winner faces me. And I said, like, great. But yeah, it just, I understand the part that it felt like it took too long to get to the point, which is the part that frustrated me in this. Because I was like, you could have gone a little bit faster than what it was. But either way, I did this, like this overall segment and how it went. Don't forget you're muted. <laughs> I was typing up our new poll. Which this oh, week on the our local establishment side. So if you're not watching over there, make sure you just jump over and go ahead and definitely go ahead and give the poll a look. It's which show will you be watching? NXT, <laughs> AE Dub, or both? both? I gave an option for everybody. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't bring this poll. Um. <laughs> But yeah, I'm interested to see what people are going to be watching. Um, I'm a children of the child of the Monday Night Wars, so I mean, obviously, I'll be watching NXT. Um, but I know that there were days where I would channel surf, and I would flip back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth. And I, ha I have a feeling a lot of people are going to be dual screening because that's the new channel flipping. The internet is not reacting as as highly in, incentivized as I thought they would about this news. You can you can really see a lot of the uh, AEW fan base um, coming out in in full force tonight upon hearing the people coming out. We've got uh, Menace Wrestling saying, "Imagine if NXT loses to AEW next week with." Uh, a gif of Kevin Durant laughing. Uh, we've got Marking Out Podcast saying, WWE is petty as hell, man. Seriously. Jade Cargill's about to challenge to win the NXT Women's Championship next week, too. Like, they're not petty. They're loading a show on their own regular night no. because AEW got bumped. It's not their fault somebody came on their night. Anyways, That's back true. for women. This is a fine promo. All the girls did everything they needed to do. Um, Lyra was a bit too sickly sweet. And I didn't like that there was no sign of a heel anywhere in sight. Because I'm fine with face versus face as an overall okay, this can happen type of thing. But I really didn't like the fact that it was three baby faces going up to face a baby face champion. And even if they do something crazy on Raw, like have Tegan Knox win the title on Raw next week, it's still a baby face. Mm -hmm. So it it annoys me a little bit that they decided to go this way with it. Uh, that being said, you know, it set up a fun match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It set up a fun match that I'm excited to see. Um, with Chris Best saying, I love how everyone laid their claim on who deserves the women's title. I agree. I just wish there was some hide nor hair of a heel somewhere in this. Because I'll be, I'll be honest, I'm going to take a little shortcut to the match right there. The match suffered the fact that there was no heel. Because it felt really odd to see Two baby faces working together to beat up another baby face. <laughs> but we'll get to that when we get there. We have a pack ad pack. We have a package for the women's breakout tournament here. And it says that Izzy Dame and Kilani Jordan are going to be tonight's match. And I'm like, goody. <laughs> you, can, you can tell I'm really looking forward to this women's breakout tournament and all the yep. wonderful talent that are in this, these matches. CBRS Entertainment. Kind of wish Tiffany Stratton came out then. No, no. I, I like the fact that they're done. Yeah. Yeah. Tiffany did what she needed to do. She proved that who she is and how hard she wants it. And she's done. And it gets her some much needed time off. And she can recover because, like Dominic, she has a hell of a shiner on her. And 
if if her gimmick is I look beautiful, they need to let her get rid of that shiner for a few weeks before they bring her back. But I have a feeling she will be back. If I'm assuming she'll be back at Halloween Havoc. She'll make a return. Yes. Uh, and then we get Butch and uh, Tyler Bate coming down for their match against Gallus. And ironically, it just basically comes back to the match that we were promised before the break. <gasps> Goodness gracious, NXT. <laughs> like, they did what first, but all it was was like 20 seconds of Trick Williams walking in and Dominic. And, um, mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah. but, but they didn't have another promo. They didn't have a four minute mm-hmm. segment in between. They just brought out the other wrestlers. It's just, it was nice. This match was fun. I liked this match. This match was great. It did everything it needed to do. Um, Joe Coffey got involved like he was supposed to. Booker T is terrible on commentary like he's supposed to. Vic Joseph is getting more annoying on commentary, which is a bad thing. (laughs) Because Booker T is so annoying on commentary, now Vic's becoming annoying. It's it, they need to fix this, and the fix is get Booker out of there. I don't care if you put Peter Rosenberg in there, and I hate Peter Rosenberg. Oh no, the worst out upon us. No, no. There's a perfectly good biggie that needs to learn how to do commentary if he can't come back to wrestling. <laughs> just saying. Um, match is great. Tyler Bate and Pete Dunn have some fun offense. They manage to get the win, and then the numbers game takes over. And out comes Ridge Holland. Like I said <laughs> on the No Mercy post show, yeah. that Ridge Holland would be the third for British Strong Style because they weren't bringing back uh, Trent Seven. Because yeah. they have, they know. We, hey, look, British Strong Style was made of three really fun and talented wrestlers that people loved. Well, no, it was made up of two people that, they, that the crowd really loved and Trent Seven. Mm-hmm. I like Trent Seven. I think he's fine, but he's not necessary. When you have a perfectly good Rich Holland that Vince McMahon adores sitting over there. Yep. And to be honest, Triple H likes him too. Because remember, he was supposed to be part of the McAfee group that had Pete Dunne in it in NXT. Mm-hmm. When he, before he got hurt and cost himself a match against Adam Cole yeah. for the NXT championship. Don't forget that one. Mm-hmm. Oh, that poor man. Uh, Chris Best saying, I miss Trent Seven. You might be the only one. I mean, well, you and Mark talks wrestling. <laughs> um, I also do want to play something as we did have our favorite friends. Oh, I don't have it in my phone. Any- I don't have it here anymore. Mark, you survive another night. I deleted the Gallus music from here, so I don't have the Gallus music to play. <laughs> it's a shame. What did you think of the tag team match? I mean, Tyler Bates in this, so you must have loved it. Um, no, it was fun to see them together too. It just it's it's nice whenever you get that kind of reunion between them, even if it's a quote unquote one night only, right? Um, Why do you have confetti? I don't know how that happened. Where did the confetti come from? <laughs> what did you Was do that in your room? What did you do? <laughs> Nothing. I didn't touch anything. I was playing on my phone for three seconds. Me neither. I don't know what happened. Anyways, uh, you were saying? <laughs> that caught me off guard. <laughs> caught me off guard, too. All of a sudden, it's just confetti <laughs> in the corner of your camera. I don't know what did anything. <laughs> um, I thought it was you, to be honest. It just made me laugh. But uh, either way, no. It was... <laughs> Oh, trust me, if he doesn't clip it, I would anyway. <laughs> um, but no, it was a fun match um, between all of them. It just, I figured right away that Coffee would get in there, and he did, like, right after the pin happened. And so it just nothing out of ordinary, ordinary there. But um, I love having Rich come in. And he got he had a good welcome as well. Like, I was wondering how people were going to react to him because I know some people were kind of hating on him because of Biggie's injury still. So I was like, I was wondering how that was going to come off. But... You know, at least he had a, a good warming welcome, so it was nice to see it. But they didn't put a graphic for it, but I'm guessing this is going to happen sometime next week or the week after, or maybe not next week because they already have it stuck as it is. But no, it was fun to watch. So I just, I like seeing them together. So now with Rich, it makes me more excited. Yeah. Um, sorry, I was looking at Twitter and it just made me laugh. Um, yeah, this was a fun match. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I think there's room to grow here, but you know, 
stuff could happen. Going back to the Tiffany Stratton thing, Chris Best says, or she can come back and do the old Cody Rhodes gimmick. You could, but Trish just did it. Yeah. Trish just had the face mask on and like, yeah, she didn't do the I'm deformed and stay away from me kind of thing, but I think the rest of that gimmick is kind of played out. Like we just had the beautiful people on impact when they did their thousand and thousand and one episode uh, anniversary specials where they had the beautiful people putting the face, uh, the bags over people's faces again. J <clears throat> sure. Was it Jay Vidal was one of the people that they put the, the thing on? <laughs> I didn't watch the show. I know you didn't. I, didn't I criticized it. the fact that they did a two week anniversary show for their <laughs> thousandth episode. Leave them alone. <laughs> Speaking of people I won't leave alone, at 8.38 on my clock, Ilya Dragunov came out to start a promo. Ten minutes later, this promo finally finished with Ilya Dragunov nowhere to be found. <laughs> Ilya comes out to the crowd chanting Mellow Mist. And he goes ahead and he puts over Carmelo Hayes being a big star and he puts over Carmelo Hayes and, the, and how hard Mellow took it to him. But at the end of the day, you can call him the Czar. You can call him the Mad Dragon. But you need to call him the new NXT World Champion. That was really good. And then Trick comes out. And the crowd gets all lively again. And they keep chanting, whoop that trick. Whoop that trick. <laughs> We've got Melball in the chat. Hello, Melball. Hello, oh, Eddie. Unfortunately, no Eddie, no Eddie Thorpe anywhere in sight this Probably week. Probably not next week either. <laughs> no, no. Based on who they're putting out there, I don't think he's going to be out there next week either. No. He's going to be... <laughs> he's going to be recovering from the, uh, the, the strap match that happened last yeah. week, which you can go ahead and check out in the archives on the YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, no. So Trick comes out and he says, you know, we're, we're going ahead and we're talking about champions. You know, congratulations on you winning yours. But I won one too. Oh, how that feels so, so bad now. He talks about how Ilya is the one who showed him how to find the strength in the inner, in the inner desire to be able to win the championship. Well, of course, this brings out Carmelo Hayes, who's like, excuse you? <laughs> Excuse you, my friend? Wh who do you think you are? You you're thanking him? He has one little feud with you over two weeks, and, and he is the one who pushed you to be a champion? I've had your back since the day the first day of 2.0. I thought it was good. I really liked that. It was fun. Yeah. <laughs> him and Trick go at it for a little bit, and Ilya goes, Hey, look, this was a thing with champions. It's obvious I'm no longer needed here, so I'm going to leave. When you two figure out whatever this is, and he points to the North American Championship, come find me. You won't have to look hard. And he walks away. Out comes uh, Mello says, am I dreaming? What's going on, Trick? Um, so that, that, that was happened before Ilya left. <clears throat> After Ilya left, he says, you come after me, uh, tricks. All my notes are disorganized. I apologize. <laughs> Mello comes out. Him and Trick go back and forth. Ilya, Ilya says, look, this isn't between me anymore. I'm leaving. Mello goes back and forth with Trick a little bit. Nothing, nothing great said. They're just continuing their back and forth. Out comes Dominic Mysterio who starts talking about how he's going to win back his North American championship because Mommy told him he needs to. Which led to Trick saying the greatest line of Trick's night. And it's the only good line that Trick had the entire night because everything else went real downhill for Trick real fast after this moment. Mm -hmm. Do you always do what mommy says? Yes. Because when mommy tells you to do something, you do it. <laughs> yeah. Mello said, you know what? He doesn't roll alone. You're going to want me in your corner. And then Dominic perfect heel dominic goes oh really trick look at this you're six foot four you're such a big dude you need this guy for help and Do and trick's like nope i'm gonna fall into the, the baby face thing i'm gonna go one-on-one -on -one against the guy who obviously has backup because that's fine remember <laughs> that for later on <laughs> what did you think i don't of want to long promo from four individuals 
Yeah, this one I didn't like how long it took definitely to get to that point. It just that part of like Trey going off on Ilya just made me laugh because I, I was waiting for that mellow to come in. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. He's like, what do you mean him? It just it made me laugh because I was like, they just look like somebody in a relationship. He's like, how are you going out with the other woman? You know, <laughs> kind of thing. It just made me laugh so much. Um, and definitely that line from Trick was priceless as well. Um, but yeah, this <sighs> Once Dom started saying that, and I was like, trick, no, why are you falling for that old trick that we heard for so often? Why? It frustrated me because I knew it was going to happen. I'm waiting for Kamala to be like, I told you so. But yeah, it just, it wasn't my favorite part because I knew that was going to happen eventually and I was dreading it. Do you think Mello is going to be the one that wins back the North American Championship? It just it, to me he should because I was thinking about it from this point of view later after since the main event happened I guess we'll talk about it at this point but being that Trick doesn't have the championship I was thinking this is not the feud between them is not the same without a championship involved if we're not having the NXT championship because Dragonov's not gonna lose it anytime soon might as well put the one that put you know that Mello put on the map to put it like that that he one that he pushed while Trick didn't even get the chance to do it because he was barely champion as well. So I think that it would be like a good like thing between both of them with that championship. Be like, I'm gonna make it the A championship again because look at you, you lost it in less than a week. So I think I back and forth between them with that championship involved will make more sense than the NXT championship right now. Yeah, it's definitely gonna be something interesting to see where they go with the North American title. While I'm not thrilled that it's back around the waist of Dominic Mysterio, I do know one person who's very happy. Mark, I hope you're happy. I know you're watching on the YouTube version. <laughs> this is all, again, this is all your fault. Second time. One more, you don't get invited back. <laughs> we move on to the ladies' triple threat, which got a decent amount of time. Got about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. I really wish four of those minutes weren't in picture in picture ad break. Yeah. So in this match, we had jobber entrances for Roxanne Perez and Lyra Valkyria. Because Indy's the only one who got an entrance. Yeah. And then the match started, and about a two minutes into the match, it goes into a picture-in-picture -picture ad break. Why? And in the rest of the match, we have Becky Lynch yapping and yapping and yapping <laughs> during the match, so I can't enjoy the actual wrestling match. Otherwise, it was pretty good. <laughs> other other than those major flaws, it was good. Kiana pulls Roxanne Perez out as she's about to win the match. And then Lyra Valkyria, taking advantage of it because it's a no disqualifications match, goes ahead and hits the world. Who does a who does a worse frog splash or splash than Lyra Valkyria? There's got there's gotta be somebody. What I don't like about it is like I wish you have some kind of style to it. But just like you going and just falling flat like that, it ain't gonna do it for me, honey. No, do a flip, do a little something in the air. I don't care what it is before you land, but you're just going and that's it. No, that no, I don't like it. <laughs> I'm like, if you feel like you're waiting for that, like you know, that like you know, in the story when you have that climax in the story, that high point, you're waiting for that high point in the move, and it never happens, and it always disappoints me when I watch it. I don't like it, but <laughs> I mean, think of it. Tiffany Stratton does the prettiest moonsault ever, which is one of the most beautiful moonsaults. Yeah. And, like, it's picture perfect every time. Like, she does a, such a fantastic job. And now she's added to her arsenal. Not just one of the best moonsaults of all time. Really, one of the better swantons in the wrestling world right now, or ever. Like, there have been people who've done great swantons. Don't get me wrong. Jeff Hardy used to do them fantastically. There's a lot of people who have done Swanton Bombs right. But hers are just wonderful. They don't. It doesn't look like she's out of control. It doesn't look like she's going to kill herself half the time. She just floats over. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't do the turn until the very last minute, but it's high enough that you know she's not going to end up on her neck. It's just lovely. And now you got Lyra Valkyrie out here going, heep, bloop. And not only that, like that would be fine if she were me, if she were Bronson Reed, 
Like, think about it. Her and Bronson Reed have the exact same finishing move. They just <laughs> fall off the top rope. Yeah. You want to know why Bronson Reed's is a really good one and why hers isn't? Because she's all of 100 pounds soaking wet and Bronson Reed's about 350. <laughs> it makes a difference. So yeah. if she's not going to be big, she needs to do something, like you said, a flip, something. Either that or make it if it was something that you could be like make give it a height like the moon saw with Tiffany, that wouldn't make sense. Because if you're looking at her, they're like, Oh holy crap, she's coming. But like her going from the, there to like down like that, it almost makes it look like you know when you're going to like the pool and you just drop like that. That's what it looks like to she me. She doesn't jump, she just falls. <laughs> she reminds me of Woody. She just falls. Anyways, we got El Ball Collins saying Natsu Natsuko Tora. I think that's how it's pronounced. Has a pretty awesome swanton as well. I mean, I, I know there are more. I, I know there are more. I'm just rattling off the one that everybody knows, which is Jeff Hardy. But I, I can... Ooh, I get a good job. I did right. Yay! I did, I, I did though, have to have her phonetics out by uh, Kojima the other day because I couldn't do Kojima's first name. I still can't because I can't look at the phonetics. Anyways... Other than Lyra having a, a, a weak finishing move, she's developed better. Her promos are better. We saw that earlier in the day. Like, that promo, well, a bit boring and a bit convo... Like, I understand how it did what it did for her. You've talked many times about representation and what that means. Yeah. Becky Lynch's representation for Irish girls everywhere. Where Zelina Vega is representation for you, where Bailey is representation for you, where AJ Lee is representation for you. Irish girls don't have that many role models to look at, but they have Becky Lynch. So I can see why somebody like Lyra Valkyria would feel that way about Becky. We because we, we both talked about how crappy Becky Lynch is. And mind you, we're not shitting on it any more than Becky has in the past. She's talked about how her time mm -hmm. in NXT was the worst period of her career mm -hmm. because of the character and the direction, that she had no direction, and she was a bland character with no real direction. Yeah. So it's not like it was the greatest thing in the world that some of us just don't like. Becky herself openly talks about how bad that portion mm -hmm. of her career was. But the representation matters. And so having an Irish woman versus an Irish woman with Tegan Knox getting in the way for a week. Like, if, if I'm Lyra Valkyria, I purposely make sure that Tegan Knox loses this match on Monday mm -hmm. just so I get the match that I want on, on uh, Halloween Havoc. Yeah. And honestly, it might not be a bad idea. Because again, we're going in face versus face, and it's fine, but Mutual respect matches only go so far, and it requires a bit of mic skills that neither one of these two have to pull off the whole mutual respect story for four weeks. Because for those that don't know, the match is taking place at Halloween Havoc Night 1, which is October 24th, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that gives us two actual shows and then next week's WWE main roster and extra extravaganza, <laughs> which for anybody who's missed it, Braun, Bra uh, Braun Breaker versus Carmelo Hayes with John Cena and Paul Heyman. Mm -hmm. Cody Rhodes is coming for a major announcement and Roxanne Perez is potentially taking on the women's champion, Asuka. So needless to say, there's not going to be any mention of Lyra Valkyria and Becky Lynch on next week's show. Yeah. yeah. Braun catches up with Carmelo Hayes backstage. And he says to Melo, you know what? I know how you feel. How you've lost. The anger. The resentment. The fans out there are cheering for Ilya. Not only are they cheering for Ilya, they're out there saying Mello missed. Take that anger. Take that frustration. Take that rage and use it on everybody. Use it on Trick. 
And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. Hold, hold, hold on, big fella. I ain't turning on Trick. I ain't doing none of that stuff. And Braun brings up it. Braun's, by the way, best promo of Braun's career. Best <laughs> promo of Braun's career. Granted, mm -hmm. not a high bar to leap over, but the best promo of his career. When you won the NXT, when, when, when you lost the NXT championship, was Braun Breaker backstage to give you a hug and give you an attaboy that you went out there and you did the best? No, he wasn't there. Did you have to go find him? And he just walks away. <laughs> Smell of thinking. I like this. I thought it was great. Yeah. We come back from commercial break. Ilya's getting his side plates put on. Baron Corbin comes up and goes, hey, I hope they don't put on those side plates too tight. After seeing who's coming next week, I really hope they don't because I think Cody Rhodes is taking that title in less than a month. No. I think Cody Rhodes is taking that title at, at night two of uh, Halloween Havoc. Anyways. <coughs> Baron says, you know what? There's only two guys in this company that's beat you. Mello and me. You beat Mello. You still ain't beat me. So why don't you uh, sleep tight? Go uh, go over there and get those stills with those brand new side plates and treasure those photos. Because it's not going to last long. <laughs> this was good. Yeah. Well, for every good, there's a bad. Blair Davenport versus Gigi Dolan. I've been crapping on this match for four weeks. I'm going to continue to crap on it. There wasn't <laughs> much to it. 90% of the match were, 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 yeah, revolved around a steel chair that neither woman could use. And then Blair Davenport, the smart heel in the match, lost playing tug of war with the referee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> Find something good. I thought it was interesting, though, that from the get-go, I was thinking Blair was going to end up winning this match because we had her gain that momentum recently. So I was thinking it's definitely Blair winning. It was just a way to like showcase themselves before Blair wins. And then we get the tug over with the chair. And then Gigi, the baby face, taking advantage of the distraction from the referee to win the match and roll over under the bottom rope and celebrate by the ramp with the, ref with the referee. I think raised her hand after. And then Blair arguing with the ref at ringside. And it just, I was like, wait, is it Blair the heel? She, couldn't she have done that? That was, that was, it felt odd at first. But at the same time, I thought this is one of the few ways they can, in a way, protect Blair from taking this loss though, at the same time because of the distraction here. But I was thinking, this is not something I expected from Gigi, the baby face, in the feud to happen. But um, I'm guessing Blair's probably going to ask for a rematch because of what happened, and I don't see it ending uh, at least this time around. So you muted. I'm doing other things. I'm trying to make a new thumbnail. <laughs> I had a perfectly good thumbnail for this show, and then this show happened, and I have to make a brand new one. <laughs> We got Chris Best. I like how Blair pie faced the referee after the match. Yeah, it's going to cost her some money, kayfabe wise, but yeah. I did think it was a nice idea. Mm -hmm. I just. It makes no sense. Gigi's not going anywhere. You need to build heels. The whole point right now is you need to build a few heels to take on Becky because you just had a number one contenders match made up of baby faces. You need to build a heel. Mm -hmm. And you just took your top heel that's not Tiffany Stratton, because she is your top heel, and you had her lose in a dumb way. Yeah. It's just... Because if you think about it, being Tiffany out of the picture, the other heels that get like showcased often are Blair and then Kiana. And then obviously we had Kiana's presence during the three-way that left Blair, and I was like... What is happening tonight? But I just realized, too, that was three women's matches and one big promo segment tonight. Good job, NXT. Well. Shh. Match. Shh. I know. We're going to keep it that way. Shh. It's okay. We'll take the victory. Let's move on. <laughs> Kiana James is backstage on her phone. She's repeatedly asked questions by Mackenzie Mitchell. She eventually gets off the phone, asks what the question was. As the question's being re-asked, she goes, oh, yeah. 
I remember the question that was supposed to be asked. I honestly think she forgot what what the what the promo segment's supposed to be and had to ask what the question was, but it worked in kayfabe because she was on the phone, so she wouldn't have heard the question. But then she ruins it by pretending that she now rec- remembers the question. Like there was a there was a playfulness there, and then she ruined it by remembering the question. Anyways. <laughs> She says, Roxanne's been the golden child since she walked through those doors. But you know who else walked through those doors during the breakout tournament? Me. You know who gets every opportunity under the sun because of her her presence in the breakout tournament? Roxanne. You know who gets looked over by everybody for everything? Me. You know who's a one-time women's NXT tag team champion? Roxanne. You know who else is a women's tag team champion? Me. Not me, but Kiana. (laughs) <laughs> just so we're clear. Um, she says, you know what? Every Everyone overlooks me for Roxanne. That's fine. Roxanne's going to have a hard time not being overlooked next week when her opponent comes down here. Asuka. And I'm like, the fuck? <laughs> like, how do you, Kiana James, mm-hmm. even in AFABE with the money you have, have enough money to procure the services of Asuka, who probably doesn't give a shit about money. Like, it's not like Asuka's a character that cares about money. Mm-hmm. I don't understand, but I'm it's down. That part didn't make sense. <laughs> if it gives me this match, I'm in. Mm-hmm. Ashton, what were your thoughts on this promo segment? It was just the overall part of the connection between Asuka and Kiana. Because something that didn't make sense to me from, you know, from one person to the other, that part. But once she said Asuka, I went, hmm, HBK going for book of the year. I see you. I see what's happening here. And that somebody pointed out, it's just incredible that we had, you know, Roxanne, she went against Mako and I going against Asuka too. So that's, I like the, her tweet. I, for, I forgot the exact words, but it was like, like jokes on you because I get to face somebody like I wanted to face. It was something along those lines. So either way, Roxanne's like, you put me in this match. I'm the one winning. And the other because I'm facing Oscar. Uh she said, Thanks for letting me check off another dream match, idiot. Sleep in one way open, Kiana James. So I was like, I, I do like that aspect of it of like, you know, you, you make it seem like it's terrible for me because I'm facing her, but at the same time it's a dream match for me. So I like how they said that. Yeah, I thought it was fun. I, I really like this promo. Again, Kiana's great on the microphone. Like the, she she had like I said, I, I think that they they missed an opportunity here to have her just keep playing along and having not heard the question. But at the end of the day, it's not that big a deal. But I think she did a really good job cutting the promo. We then get all the women standing in a row for the breakout tournament introduction bullshit that we don't need. We had a video package earlier. We know who these women are. You've showed us their picture twice now. Mm-hmm. No entrances for Kalani versus in, in, in Izzy Dame. I would have liked to hear if Izzy Dame has theme music. We've heard Kalani's. We've never heard Izzy Dame's. Mm-hmm. I would have liked to have heard if she had music. Um, I do want to say, however, I just saw this on Twitter, and I didn't realize it. I kept going ahead and putting... Um, the finisher that the split-legged moonsault that Kalani does, and I kept in my head putting it with John Morrison because I see split-legged and I instantly think Starship Pain. Yes, there's no twist to it, but it's essentially the same move almost. Yeah. And I'm sitting here and watching and I'm going, oh, that's not who she's emulating. Not at all. It's Trinity. Mm-hmm. Trinity yeah. does the split leg and moonsault. Mm-hmm. So thank you, Twitter, for for teaching me that because honestly, that's the most interesting thing to talk about with this match. I, the fact that they telling me that Kalani Jordan is the favorite in this tournament tells you how bad this tournament is. And my girl's Lola's in this, but how bad can a tournament be if Kalani Jordan is the best the best and favorite in the tournament? Oy. I can't with you. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. There you go, the meme again. 
<laughs> no, just like I was telling you, is I feel like they they start looking at it from this standpoint of like most of the girls. I mean, all the girls are new to it. But if you think about it, when you count the matches at NXT, then Kalani is the one with the most experience out of all of them. And she's the only one that has made it to a PLE like that as well. So for them, I understand from their point of view, having her as a favorite because she's the one that we have seen on TV the most out of all of them. And then probably Lola after that, because we've seen Jakara, but we haven't seen her wrestle. Lola, we've seen wrestle. And then um, Ariana got injured pretty quickly, so we really saw her wrestle as well. So I think it, from like that standpoint, it does make sense of why they say like Kalani because of the experience that she had so far. Yeah, no, I get it, but it screams that you needed better people in your tournament if Kalani Jordan is the best you can get. I'm just saying. <laughs> there are wonderful women across the world that are out there that are free agents, and this is the best you can do when you knew you had a tournament coming? Think about this. In the men's breakout tournament, we had Josh Briggs and Carmelo Hayes. Now, yeah, we had Odyssey Jones and crap like that. But we had bona fide stars, indie stars, in Carmelo Hayes and Josh Briggs. In the first women's breakout tournament, we had Roxanne Perez, who was already a name, a household name, mm -hmm. for being the Ring of Honor Women's World Champion. Not the first ever, but a Women's World Champion in Ring of Honor. That that tweet still hurts me that they slight my, my dear friend Sumi Sakai. Because I was there when Sumi won the match. I was there when she mm. won that title. And I, mm. I, I seen her defend it a couple times because I was a big Ring of Honor fan during that period of time. And I'm just like, Taylor Hendricks is still a wrestler. You could have gone out and gotten her. She has plenty of an indie experience. And if even if you're not going to put them over, at least bring them out into the tournament and let them lose. Mm -hmm. Because none of these girls are ready for the big time. None of these matches can be long because none of these girls are ready. And it's just, I don't, I don't want to keep crapping all over it. But at the same time, it's like, mm -hmm. I get that you want to do a breakout. But to do a breakout, you have to have people with talent and potential. And Kalani is really the only one with superstar potential. Because Lola's still way too green to have any potential right now. Yeah. She's good. She's getting better. But she's just started having matches on NXT. Kalani Jordan was being trained, was being trained by Dana Brooke on television. Like, how can I believe that she's the most talented one in this entire tournament? I'd I think if you think about it too, from their standpoint, I think this is the first time, if I'm not mistaken, if you think about it from the contestants, that all these girls are starting from scratch at the PC. Because like you said, you know, last time we had people like Roxanne who had previous experience too. But in this one, all these girls are starting out in the PC. So I like how this is different in that aspect too from the girls before. It's like, basically, if you think about it, this was like, we made these girls from scratch here. So like whatever you see on screen is like, we made that happen. So I think that it just shows like a different kind of meaning this time around compared to before. Sorry, something accidentally played. I apologize. Yeah, no, I agree. Like, it's fine that you have these people who are day one NXT through and throughs, but you better be damn sure they're ready. And this is, a, like I said, mm -hmm. it was a fine match. Like, there's nothing wrong with this match. Mm -hmm. Kalani Jordan's getting better and better every time she's in the ring. She looked good. Yeah, I didn't like how Izzy went though because I I felt like all we saw from her was her trash talking, but then nothing to like really show for it. The best thing she did was that backbreaker to Kalani. But aside from that, I felt like there was nothing that I could be like, whoa, like she definitely like I could feel like the breakout tournament is for her because I didn't see anything that stood out to me. I like that she had her moment to like shine and be in you know and during the match in itself. But if you think about it, oh, she was hit one move and then she'll go like this, like she was trash talking Kalani. Like that's all she would do as if she was buying time because she had nothing else. But then Kalani's the one selling the moves. Kalani's, you know doing everything else and picking up the slack in the match and then winning it at the end. I was like, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're out right now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I'm glad you're out of the tournament. Um, but you know, I'm glad at the, at the same time we have Kalani. The thing that I felt um, looking back at the graphic, I'm pu putting it in here. 
um, is that I was thinking it's like Donny, Danny Palmer and Lola Vice in the same round. I would have switched them off with Carmen and Jada because I would you have one of the girls that's been on TV a little bit longer than the other ones in every single kind of, I don't want to say in every single match if you think about it from that standpoint. But, uh, you know, that's it. Uh, the part that has made me laugh, though, has been the memes between uh, Ariana Gr Ariana Grace and, like, the way they put Santina Morella online with the pageant stuff. Uh, that has been funny. But, yeah, during the match in itself, I, I wish Izzy would have done a little bit more because I feel like everything she did was, I want to say, like, lackluster in a way. But that's how I felt about it. So, Ariana Grace is winning this, right? <laughs> I don't know at this point. Oh, her Jakar, right? It, it has to. It's it's that match that wins this tournament. I'm guessing Ariana in that one at least. Because, well, I think Jakara because she's going to have the metaphor outside the ring. So I think you can cheat to win her all the way to the finals. Yeah. And then it'd be like her against you know Danny Palmer or something, because NXT apparently hates me. <laughs> like. You couldn't redo this with former, like, breakout tournament stars because most of them still haven't broken out. Like, you could have had Tatum Paxley in this. You could have had um, Fallon Henley back in this. You could have had Kiana back in this. Like, you could have done stuff like that. You didn't have to necessarily go to NXT level up and go, okay, all of y'all that have been doing level up matches that Ed doesn't know, you're all going to come up here and do matches now. <laughs> like, That's where's Steven Turner? She's yeah. healthy. Why isn't she in this tournament? She'd have been like another, like, heel person to, like, move up, if anything. Anyways, we get a backstage segment with uh, JC Jane and uh, Thea Hale. And Thea wants nothing to do with Andre Chase and Duke Hudson as they come to tell her that, you know, they wanted to be in her corner and they wanted to wish her luck for her match. And JC's like, no, no, you guys can come. It's fine. You guys can come up by ringside. And Thea's like, whatever. I don't give a damn. And she walks away. My favorite part is like, we'll do chase you on three. <laughs> she helped them do every part, but she didn't say it, though. Just a funny part. No, she didn't say it, but she did help them get it because yeah. she wants to look good in Thea's eyes. So that when Andre Chase starts coming and going, yeah. she's using you, she can go, no, she likes us. She likes you. Why are you picking on yeah. her? She's my new friend enough. and you're picking on. That's exactly where this is going to go. Mm -hmm. And the sad thing is, if this were any other wrestling company, it would end up with Andre Chase versus Thea Hale in a match. But it's WWE and they won't do that. So I don't know where it goes. No idea. <laughs> JC Jane and Thea Hale then have tag team action against Electra Lopez and Lola Vice in their really shitty elevator theme music. <laughs> the only thing I don't like is between them is that entrance because everything you can tell they're just counting it so they go out at the same time when they do the head thing like this and just I don't like that. <laughs> it's like and they come to the ring and they pose at the same time. And it's like I can tell you're doing it with like a certain count in your head so you do it at the same time. So it, it's you know, it's too hurst, but it is what it is. Yeah, it's 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 Electra Lopez hasn't gotten any better. It's been a while. Yeah. Uh that spot of her running into the post was was pretty awful. Oh, did you notice oh, Thea dancing to the song? No, I'm talking about the spot where she, where I know. Oh, okay. But I'm just saying, did you did you see that from when Thea was dancing to the theme song though? No, I didn't. <laughs> Yeah, I don't right. know or care. <laughs> Thea Hale on my TV screen. I don't know or care. But I care about her more than I care about the breakout tournament. So I moved on from that to talk about this. <sighs> this this was a match. It it was indeed a match. It had a bell, <laughs> it had it had some wrestling and sure. some wrestling, and then it had and a referee in there and everything. <sighs> <laughs> I, I have I I feel like I have no notes for that because it was just like it happened, and then the girls won, and I saw Andre and and Duke, you know, happy and celebrating. But that that was it. We catch up with uh, Carmelo Hayes outside the arena, and he goes, "You know what? 
I just got off the phone and I have a match with Braun Breaker next week. And you know, I had to call somebody to give me some confidence. So I call up my boy John Cena and I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. They're both from Boston. They probably would have exchanged words. They probably met at some point. Yeah, that makes sense that he'd call John Cena. I mean, I'm assuming he did it via Twitter because I don't think John Cena would have given him his cell phone number. Yeah. John Cena is very particular about things. I don't know if anybody's ever watched Total Divas. Mm-hmm. Very particular. <laughs> but he goes ahead and says, not only did Cena get become a 16-time world champion, to do that, he had to get knocked down 15 times and get back up. So I can do it too. And I'm like, all right, that makes sense. And he's going to be in my corner next week. I'm like, the fuck? The <laughs> fuck you say, boy? <laughs> I wait, wait, did I hear that right? <laughs> I did not think I heard it right until I saw the graphic a couple seconds later that said John Cena in the corner of Carmelo Hayes to take on Braun Breaker. <laughs> it's it a funny part because it was at that moment that I realized that WWE yeah, is AEW thing a little seriously. Yeah, first I was, I was thinking I like the Oscar one because I'm like we've seen a couple of people from the main roster come down in recent weeks. It makes sense. With the media, it's, right a there. Match, it's a dream match. It's something that, and it's a testing thing for Roxanne. We know Roxanne's yeah. ready for the main roster. It's a mm -hmm. chance to just go ahead and show her, you know, have mm -hmm. Oscar come down, wrestle with her, and have Oscar mm -hmm. go back to Triple H and go, Yeah, she's really, really ready. We can bring her up. And I'm like, Okay, that makes a little bit. And then they said John Cena. I'm like, He barely comes back to WWE for anything, let alone mm -hmm. come all the way fuck down to NXT. Has it been to NXT since they called it Florida Championship Wrestling? I should skip my show next week. <laughs> I'm sure I can find a guest for next week's show. I wouldn't be able to. But it's okay. <laughs> but it just it, in that moment when I said is that because I I like I said I was thinking of like we have main roster people come down so I it, I understand Oscar being there. I was like that was one. Once I heard Jesse and I went. What? Are you serious? And that's when I remembered. I was like, oh, they're going against AW next week. And it's TK's birthday on top of it. Oh, is it Tony Khan's birthday next week? He said it during the media scrum, which is the funny part. If he loses, I, that'll, be, that'll be the first do, person for I him. I also do want to bring up something else. And, and something that Ash would show me, so all credit goes to her. Bully Ray, as soon as the John Cena thing got tweeted out, Cena to NXT next Tuesday. On all levels, if you don't think there's a chess match going on right now between AEW and NXT, you just don't understand the business. And he's right. It's not about being petty. It's not about, oh, AEW's on, we have to put out a hell of a show. No, it's about the fact that you've got a chance to go ahead and potentially steal a couple fans. You've got a chance to have a big-ass show and by the way, John Cena's leaving in a few weeks because the writers have just finished their strike, which means the actors aren't far behind. So Cena's got maybe a month left. And as soon as these dates he signed on for are done, he's gone. So if you're going to bring him, bring him now. Mm -hmm. So it's not this petty thing that people keep bringing up that it's going to be. It's the same thing WWE has done for 30 to 40 years, when competitions on that night, they go big. They try to do it when Monday Night Football has a massive matchup. They try to make sure they have big events. When any competitor runs a show against them on the same weekend and it's not called Collision, they make sure they have a big event. Sorry, Collision doesn't count. They're not <laughs> going to count our program Collision. They could put Sunday Night Heat from 1998 up on, on their on the on the television network and it'd still draw more people than collision. <laughs> but it's just it's just I think it's just a fun time in wrestling because I like at least myself I'll be having I'm glad I have two screens because I will be watching both both screens next week. You know when you think about it plus I'm like they'll be going against you know Adam Copeland's AW debut and who knows what else because we haven't seen the whole card from Dynamite until tomorrow but it just makes me laugh because I think about the meme of this one is like HPK going to TK here hold my beer what you got now because <laughs> I want to see what else he has to his you know to the show does Jade Cargill like I, I know I read the, the the stupid tweet about Jade Cargill showing up does she show up next week 
I will kind of do it in a way of like a teasing of like kind of like I can show up anywhere and like have her show up in that sort of way, but not say she's play in her, NXT. Play her theme music so that we hear what what music she has in that debate, mm. and then just have her pop up. Yeah. But also have her pop up on Raw the night before. And on that same week, make sure she pops up on SmackDown too, and do it all three nights. Yeah, keep that. Or do NXT me. first, SmackDown on Friday, and then Raw the next week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As if this wasn't enough. Right after we get the Carmelo Hayes news about John Cena. Oh, by the way, Cody Rhodes is coming to, coming down to NXT with a major announcement. He's going against AEW. <laughs> I do like, like, the rest of this is just good business. Cody Rhodes cutting a promo on NXT the same night that AEW is programmed against them, that's petty. That's where WWE loses the whole petty thing. (laughs) When they have Cody Rhodes coming to cut the promo next week. That's crazy. What do you think his announcement's going to be? I was thinking about it. I was like, what kind of announcement he could give during NXT? I did the way I was thinking, what about Pillman? But uh, that's the only thing that I could think of because we had his like video packages for a while. Okay, but, but why would Cody and what are they gonna have a match? Is I don't know, I don't know. I, I, I kept trying to think of like what does Cody have that could be announcing? Oh, maybe the Dusty Classic has it happened this year? I don't remember he this hates one. It's the Dusty Classic, but I'm like, he has to announce something related to him or his family. Like, what else could he say? He's coming NXT. to challenge Ilya Dragunov. That it's like I'm thinking something he cannot say during Raw and SmackDown because he has more ties to NXT than to the other shows. Again, he's challenging Ilya Dragunov. No, could you imagine if the that. deadline main event is Cody Rhodes versus Ilya Dragunov? Oh gosh! <laughs> could you imagine if that's the main event for the December show? That's crazy. Well, ticket sales though. Tickets go on sale Wednesday. Tomorrow morning, tickets go on sale. I'm not planning to go to the show because my friend doesn't want to drive two hours. If Cody Rhodes is on that show, I'm getting tickets. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I, I'm trying to think of like anything that that ties into NXT that he could be saying here that's more important in NXT than in Raw and SmackDown. I don't know. We then get the main event. Which, honestly, after everything else we've heard tonight, is kind of lackluster. <laughs> Can you imagine the main event of your wrestling program being a fantastic wrestling match between Trick Williams and Dominic Mysterio? Not as good as Saturday, let's be honest. It wasn't as good as Saturday. Yeah. Because there's interference everywhere. Mommy throws in her title and Trick gets DDT'd on that. They try to use the briefcase. Finn uses his title. JD McDonough comes running and gets kicked in the face by Trick. Like they did everything they could. No. I like that it took all of that to get Dom his title back. Mm-hmm. At least Trick looks like a competent competitor by having to come overcome everybody in the group. My favorite part is kicking JD Funko Pop in the face. Yes, kicking J- Maybe that's <laughs> what it is. Maybe it's Cody versus JD Funko Pop. <laughs> <laughs> but you know i, I like that what i just kept thinking the same thing you did of like it took all of all of judgment day and jd funko pop for th- for them to take down trick and it's like it, it takes so many people to take him down because even the ddt on the championship didn't do it you know they had to have the distraction and jd coming in and even then it took balor hitting him with the championship for him to come down so I like that part of it, but at the same time, it shows of like if you think about it from the storyline uh, standpoint of Dom loses the championship when Mommy wasn't around, but then when Mommy's around, he regains it. So it's like he can't do anything without her being involved. So not no shocker there, of course. But yeah, I didn't like having Trick lose this quickly. That's the only part that frustrated me out of this. It just it made me go, but why? You know, we all we all wanted this. You you could hear the crowd reaction. It's like I know it's gonna gain him more sympathy with the crowd, but it doesn't mean I wanted him to lose the championship tonight. It's just no, not a fan of it. All right, well, not enough people voted on the thing, so I can't really count this. But if I did <laughs> count it, it's a win for NXT because only one person voted, and they voted for NXT. <laughs> it wasn't me. 
So we'll have to try that another night. Astrid. Oh, I almost forgot. We then, at the end of the show, got pro, but wrote, but got Paul Heyman outside the TV truck from TV, I'm assuming last night? I'm assuming it was Raw last night that he was outside at? Mm. And he starts talking. And he goes, mm. you know what? You're going to get advice from the second best, the second greatest of all time. And I'm like, oh, God. They're not going to bring Roman Reigns to NXT, right? I was thinking They're not going to bring Roman Reigns to... I literally... I thought the, w- the way he kept talking, I thought they were bringing fucking Roman Reigns to NXT. Then I got the render for Paul and Roman saved to put on the thumbnail. Yeah. No, it's just Paul Hammond. He's going to, he has been given the permission of the tribal chief to be in the corner of Braun Breaker. And that I'm excited for because mm-hmm. Braun Breaker being a Paul Hammond guy. Wait, 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 we talked about it too. Was it you that mentioned it or, or Caden? Or was it more? I think it was I Caden. Don't yeah. I don't like the, I don't love the idea of Paul Hammond going from Roman Reigns to Braun Breaker. I think it's a bit of a, da- of a, of a downturn, mm-hmm. but in terms of the tribal chief taking a liking to a Braun Breaker, that I like. I like this idea. I like the way they played it off. And again, forget this week. Look at next week. <laughs> and you know what we're going to need to keep up with both shows next week? Rogue Energy. And you can go ahead and scan the QR code right below Asher, or you can go to rogueenergy.com and get yourself a sugar-free, healthier-for-you energy drink option with all kinds of fantastic flavors, including my favorite, the Sour Watermelon. Yes, you can get the Sour Watermelon right now if you go to Rogue Energy. You want to save some money? Getting close to Christmas, everybody wants to save some money, right? Go ahead and use the promo code OLEPODS to get 10% off your order. Yes, go to rogueenergy.com. Or scan the QR code just below Astrid, and you can go ahead and get 10% off your order when you use the promo code OLE Pods. You like your thing in a can like Astrid does with her Red Bull? Boom, they've got you covered. If you like it in a tub and you shake it, shake it, shake it, go ahead and get that workout in, shake, 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 you can go ahead and do that too. Go to rogueenergy.com and remember, use the promo code OLE Pods to get 10% off your order. Astrid, where can the good people find you next week? I mean, hopefully this weekend we'll have a, uh, I was going to say no mercy. Why am I stuck on next week? <laughs> uh, fast lane post show. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to do. But aside from that, uh, you can find me on social media, X and Blue Skies, Astro Pizarro, Instagram and Threads, Astro Pizarro 20. And then everything else is on my YouTube channel that you can find. So there you go. Don't forget that Astro will be live at the end of fast lane this Saturday. Right? I'm gonna try. I thought I told you the question that you. I mean, were. I hope so. I'm waiting to see if I have a partner or two. You can do it by yourself. No, no, we're not doing it's that. Just, Nobody wants to see fast, that. Fast, it's just fast lane. Okay. <laughs> Astrid and friends will be live this Saturday to go ahead and cover uh, fast lane. Um, you can also catch me tomorrow night solo wrestle draft episode two. Where I try to finish, but I'm not gonna, but I'm gonna try to finish season one. <laughs> Hopefully, I'll have some friends stop by to go ahead and help me through as I go ahead and play through my own solo wrestle draft while we await the return of Chris Parrish. You can also catch me this Friday night as me and my friend Andre C are back. Yes, Marvel Talk is back this Friday night. We are back and we're gonna be talking episode one of Loki. Yes, episode one of Loki will be debuting this Thursday, so Friday night we will be back. We're going to be on a kind of a funky schedule for Loki because, unfortunately, work's getting in the way for some of us. But Marvel Talk is back now that the writer strike is over and the Actors Guild looks like they're making headway in negotiations. So hopefully we're going to go ahead and return. So Marvel Talk will be back. We'll be covering Loki. We'll be getting ready to cover Miss Marvel at the in the beginning of November. And then we're going to go ahead and start doing our Marvel rewatch series where me and Andre go back to the past and start all the way at the beginning with Iron Man at some point. So definitely keep your eyes out for that in the future. 
you can go ahead and find me on the X at EdFries12584. You can find me on the Twitch at EdFries2002. Brand new Marvel season just dropped. It's a whole bunch of fun again. So I'm going to go ahead and try to stream some of that coming up. <coughs> of course, you can find our local establishment at all of these fine different locations on every social media platform that you can think of. And if you need to, just go ahead and check out the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash our local establishment. You can find all the links from it right there. We have enjoyed having you here and we'll see you all next time. Have a good night. Goodbye. <laughs>